Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. Um, thank you for joining the XR Innovation Week, day two, right? We are live, and I have here co-hosting with me, Jennifer, and also our speaker, Daniel, from Ethiopia, right? And um, we're super excited. This is day two, right? Day two, day two, day two. All right, so thank you all for joining us. Um, this event has been streamed live via Facebook, YouTube, and also Twitter. Right, you can join us on all those platforms as you wish. And um, I will allow Jennifer to introduce Daniel. Um, Daniel is an amazing guy. Um, we connected at the Africa Innovation Summit, if I'm correct. Uh, Daniel, <laughs> yeah, and since then it's, it's been amazing. Doing, he, he and his team, they are doing great stuff um, with XR in Utopia. They recently won an award, which we will share also. And um, Jennifer, thank you for there. Absolutely. I am honored to uh, introduce Daniel to you all today. Uh, Daniel Getacho is the founder and CEO of Guzzo Technologies, an IT services and media startup company that resides in Ethiopia. They're highly focused on VR, AR, and IoT products, which I think is super interesting. Daniel also worked as an independent contractor and trainer for different companies. We're really excited to have you here with us today. Daniel, the floor is yours. We can't wait to hear what you have to share with us. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank uh, you, Daniel. You can hear my voice. Not on me, right? Mm -hmm. OK, Great. thank you. So nice to have you on, uh, uh, all of you, on this XR Innovation Week. I'm so excited to be part of this great event. And uh, I would like to express my appreciation for the organizers, the host, uh, for this kind of chance for African startups. This will make us like to stand out, especially uh, in these emerging technology areas. So my topic for today is XR for uh, cultural, culture, heritage, and tourism. And our uh, startup company, Google Technologies, is also focusing on uh, the top emerging technologies, which is XR itself. And we have it's, uh, our own services uh, department that we call Guzo Map. So uh, I will be more focusing on Guzo Map uh, technology and all the product services that we are doing. So uh, let me start uh, just to give you a few insights. I think Jennifer expressed uh, some of the details about our company. But uh, let me say a few things. So we do AR, VR, content design, development, and implementation. This is uh, one of the top focusing area that we, we are working on currently. And we also develop uh, an IoT platform and prototyping for different clients and also products. Uh, so we came as a background. We came from a software. Uh, engineering field. So we tend to develop softwares uh, for different enterprise companies, which are even uh, located abroad and also locally, uh, and do media and advertisement with the help of the uh, production equipments that we have. So as a tech startup, uh, we, we are focusing on these areas, but specifically into the AR, VR, and XR content design, development, and implementation. So just to introduce myself, um, my name is Daniel Getacho, and I'm a computer science. I, I have a background in computer science and uh, master's in software engineering. So this is my uh, vision before like seven, eight years back uh, to uh, work on emerging technology. One of the emerging technologies which I was interested uh, on was virtual reality. By the time when I was uh, trying to uh, submit my uh, thesis project, uh, I said I selected this idea and just to make our university uh, campus area uh, to be available online so that newcomers, new students can just walk through the compound easily from their home. So that was the idea. So eventually we end up like uh, forming our Google Technologies startup, and uh, we are everywhere. And you can find me with my social handle, Danny DPX. So that's my 
uh, social handle if you want to contact me. So let me just go and introduce uh, you the Guzo Map XR Studio. So it's a studio which is under our uh, Guzo Technology startup. Uh, all the AR, VR, or uh, XR contents are produced here. Uh, so Guzo Map stands for like Guzo means, by the way, it's an uh, it's an Amharic word. It means travel. So the name itself is uh, travel, and we took the idea of travel because we are letting users to travel uh, virtually through our platform or through our products that we are producing. So uh, it's been formally, uh, after we started as a startup company, uh, we based uh, in cultural and tourist attract attraction areas and heritage sites. So we try to uh, digitalize those places uh, by taking 360 videos and also photos, uh, as you know, in most virtual tour platforms. So that's how we started. But after uh, 2019, uh, after we formed our company, our startup company, Google Technologies, we up uh, upgraded like from the uh, real uh, photo and video related uh, VR contents into a CGI based, which is a computer generated uh, interface view of this uh, heritage sites, uh, just to make them available virtually in a photorealistic way. So that's the concept behind uh, the CGI version of virtual reality. So we launched uh, one prototype a year ago, uh, and we tried showcasing to different uh, events and also uh, different people that we know across our network. And the, this is like an actual place located in Ethiopia. Uh, it's called uh, Bakafa Palace. Uh, it's one of the palaces that you can find uh, in Ethiopia. And this is like one specific portion of that compound. And we experimented a lot of things. Uh, we tried to uh, create uh, real textures, uh, real, scal real uh, scaling, and also uh, different uh, post-production and uh, some kind of uh, mixed reality. But it was not successful by, by that time. And it was like uh, kind of interesting when we showcased this to different African uh, institutions and also startups that uh, we know. And by the time when we just showcase this product, we see that it has a great potential towards promoting African culture and also tourism. And uh, in a month or two, uh, the spread of COVID was really uh, impacted, I mean, negatively impacted our uh, so survival <laughs> as a startup because it was not even a year since we established our company and when COVID uh, uh, spreads all over Africa, it's really hard time to promote uh, this kind of product for almost like eight, nine months. Uh, so we, we just uh, specialized, I mean, we only experimented by our own several other tastes and experiments, uh, but it was not successful at that time when we release the video. Because the tourism sector, when COVID uh, spreads all over Africa, uh, the tourism sector was the one which uh, is highly impacted. Uh, so a lot of hotels uh, were locked and also resorts, even tourist attraction sites all over Africa. So that was really challenging to uh, convince uh, the government uh, even this kind of things are possible because we know that this kind of ideas are working abroad, especially in Europe. So how do we just prove uh, it will work in Africa as well? Because they know they can understand the virtual reality using some kind of stress XT images and videos, but not the CGI version, because the CGI version 
it's it looks and feels like you are playing a game because we add a gamifying concept on top of the heritage sites. Uh, but, you know, when you have some challenges, uh, basically it's really discouraging, especially in Africa, because they will take time. And uh, as a startup, we have to survive and it's a bit of challenging, but we see that it has a great impact uh, just to promote all the tourist attraction sites and also different cultures of Africa. So this was like an experimental project. So when I come to the mixed reality uh, ideas that we have developed or experimented, uh, I, I think just to prove uh, a mixed reality uh, uh, technology, I mean, the, we know XR is, it, it incorporates AR, VR, and also uh, mixed reality. So we tasted out several mixed reality experiments with our uh, studio in our studio. And the first uh, on the left side, what you are seeing is a roller coaster experiment. Uh, so it tracks basically the headset. Uh, so everything behind the headset will be rendered in front of the, the user. So you feel like you are in the middle and this is a true virtual reality, uh, a true mixed reality uh, experiment that we have done in Unreal Engine. So think of this as uh, a way to promote uh, tourist attraction sites, especially a heritage, you know, different historical heritage sites. Uh, if you place this kind of experiments in airports, uh, definitely there are uh, transits and also uh, foreigners who, who will be interested to visit these places without going physically. So uh, one uh, scenario or, or one test case for this project or uh, for this experiment will be uh, to place this kind of uh, immersive content around airports. So uh, there are these transits they will stay here for three hours, five hours, sometimes for eight hours, or they might be even take a day. So within this short amount of time, they don't have, uh, uh, I mean, they don't get time to go physically and visit the actual place. So if we just put it in a mixed reality format, they feel like they are presented or uh, the, the actual presence in this place will be more close than only seeing through the virtual reality. So we will record this as a video. So they will take it after they experiment or they visit this place and they can share it on social media. The same thing that we experience when we are in a, the actual place. So they, we can grab objects, we can uh, move, we can interact with several things. Uh, I will come into the other section, which I will explain more of our experiments. So basically, uh, we are trying to bring an actual experience into uh, a digital one without losing the feeling. So that's uh, that's what these experiments uh, can show us. And the other one uh, is, you know, what's hard to bring uh, virtual, uh, I mean, an actual historical place or a heritage site or a statue like this is to bring the nature of the texture itself and also the realistic behavior of it. So we use a technique called uh, photogrammetry. Uh, so photogrammetry is it's a technique that you will take an actual picture of this physical object from different directions. So as much as uh, all this image uh, if you take a lot of images as you want uh, from different angles, so the more images you have, the more realistic uh, object that you can generate out of those uh, different angles. So this is a technique we used uh, for most of our projects to uh, get the actual uh, shape and also texture of the place. So you, when you see it in a virtual reality headset or uh, maybe a, using a website, it feels like um, uh, it's real and also you can't differentiate it with the actual statue. 
So we also use this technique and I'm going to explain how it helps us to produce it in a virtual production uh, area. So the virtual production is the third major uh, area that we also uh, apply for our uh, contents uh, or this uh, creation. So I explained about how we uh, design the VR and how we place all display uh, objects and also take an actual um, statue or uh, real physical objects into our VR world and mix this two. So the virtual production is a, it's a technique that you can record or produce a live video uh, in a virtual stage, as you see on the screen. So uh, we bring uh, top rated uh, story narrators, which are experts in their fields. And they, they came to our studio and uh, they narrate different stories. So basically you will see them inside uh, uh, the VR experience that we are presenting. So uh, while you are visiting from one place to a different place, you will meet uh, this uh, storytellers so that you can easily understand the story behind this place and also uh, uh, you can interact with different objects maybe if you are uh, if you want to grab something from the ground like there are shields this is like a post-war event uh, i know uh, uh, most of africans knew about this story uh, the battle of adwa so we try to virtually produce uh, the prehistory of Adwa. So it's one of an African victory because it's placed as, it's not only an Ethiopian victory, it's also an African victory. So we are interested to produce uh, the prehistory before the Battle of Adwa. So there were like two different wars and this uh, historians, this experts explain about the whole story behind how Adwa itself started uh, so you can basically feel like you are in a post-war zone area. You can uh, see different uh, soldiers, uh, which are like lie down on the ground and different weapons, uh, the shields. So it you can you will feel like you are physically there and you are interacting with a real person. He is in front of you and uh, telling you all the story. So. The virtual production aspect is not only for historical places or uh, tourism sec sector, but uh, when you come to the culture, uh, the cultural aspect, uh, we can promote different uh, cultural dances, we can say. Uh, even video clips are made through virtual production. Virtual production is a really um, uh, huge area, especially for uh, media and entertainment. Uh, companies. So uh, there are news anchors which are placed in a virtual environment, especially for sport events and weather uh, for recasting shows. So that's one of the technique and media area, but in software aspect, you can't see it a lot. So that's why we are trying to mix the technical aspect with the, uh, with the media uh, capability so that we can bring the best out of these two different areas. So the virtual production will give us a chance to uh, produce videos and also contents like this and share it online. Uh, you can find the video version in our YouTube channel. I will uh, show you some of the videos and projects that we made. Uh, so how we are, uh, how we did all of this kind of projects and um, produce the XR or VR or MR, any of these uh, things uh, like prior to releasing for public. So before we do anything, we do research a lot, a lot about the place itself, the history behind it, the color, the lightings, and think of it, we are trying to recreate uh, a site or a place which was uh, 300 or 400 years back. So we need to get a lot of references and also ask different experts to get and 
visualize how it looks when it they when they built these places. So we try to refer different uh, lighting techniques from other creators, and also uh, we start from that end uh, design all our mood board. We call it a mood board, so that's how we design it. Uh, so all the photo realistic scenes on uh, our uh, projects, some of them are uh, that we took uh, through the photogrammetry technique, but uh, the other things uh, is thanks to the Unreal Engine. Most of the projects, I think, all of the projects that we made public at this point uh, is made in Unreal Engine. So Unreal supports uh, Quixel Megascan assets. So Quixel Megascan, <clears throat> just to give you a few insight about this, uh, is uh, I think most of you watched The Lion King, the animation movie, the new animation movie. I think it was released in 2018 or, or 19. Uh, they used uh, Megascan's assets. So <clears throat> they do a photorealistic, uh, they took it to the physical place and take pictures, a lot of pictures, high quality pictures of all the assets that they can see or gate. So it's a really large collection of uh, realistic assets that you can find uh, in Unreal Engine. So I think now they are also acquired by uh, Epic Games. So uh, this ecosystem is now growing. So we are also one of their uh, users uh, for our uh, content creation. So that's how we do the research and everything. But I want to share something. Uh, the reason why we need this kind of projects to promote culture uh, and tourism or any of this is uh, this image will explain a lot. Because think of a war in Syria. So this is a place in Syria. Uh, previously, as you can see, there was a picture a man is holding uh, under and the current or the actual uh, scene at this point is, as you can see it, so it's destroyed. So when we destroy our history, I, I, we feel like uh, we, don't, we no longer have a vision or we don't know how we can go. And it's as an African, this kind of things should inspire us. I mean, our histories the positive side uh, should give us like uh, a great motivation towards our success. So uh, like digitalizing all these contents will give us a chance to pass history. I mean, the good ones uh, for a generation. If we don't have an XR contents in general, I mean, I will, we will be releasing different products, not even contents. Uh, I only showcased contents uh, that we made public at this point, but uh, we also uh, prototype the IoT things, like I said, so uh, we will be releasing one uh, product in a few days or weeks, that depends on the planning, so we already testing it in, uh, in practice, so once uh, we plan, we will be releasing to the public, so all these kind of things are really interesting uh, for the next generation. It won't be that much feasible for us at this point. It feels like that, especially due to the circumstance that we see everywhere. But the tourism area without digitalization and VR, XR, and all these contents is really impossible uh, because uh, COVID teaches us a lot of things. Uh, and it's really hard to move from one place to another and even to for the historical sites, the conservation is really hard without having this kind of content. So uh, as an African, this is how we can go align with European, US, and any other developed countries. Uh, so they understand our vision. So we are really happy to work with uh, Epic Games. Uh, we showcased our ideas. We showcased our uh, different experimental projects and uh, they gave us an award uh, under their mega grants uh, program. So it's really famous program. And we were like so happy to uh, won this award as an African startup in uh, VR, XR, and also mixed reality 
uh, related uh, projects. So, yeah, so this is the reason why we are uh, up to developing different contents. We really, we started from Ethiopia as an Ethiopian uh, based startup. That's where we, we, sh we need to start. But our vision is really big to specialize uh, this uh, field and professionally and also uh, try to uh, partner up with different startups all over Africa and share what we know and uh, um, digitalize all these historical places in a way which is really easy um, and, and um, understandable for the public. So this is uh, an area which if we add a gamification on top of this, we have an actual place and a game which we can sell and get revenue out of it. So the gaming area in VR is the leading sector, if you see the charts. So we can also uh, take some share as an African entity. So that's that's our big vision we have with Guzo uh, Map XR Studio. So this is my presentation and thank you. And for any questions, I will be available uh, I will be handing over my uh, presentation to Aromi and to the hosts. Thank you. Hey. You did great, right? Just so far. Great job, Daniel. Um, I really appreciate you sharing um, some of the beautiful imagery with us all. I'm curious, you know, there's so much value with regards to, you know, uh, being able to reconstruct in, in some of the examples, um, you know, uh, places that, you know, for for whatever reason, don't appear the way that they, they did at one point. Um, and then also just preserving what exists today. How do you how do you make the determinations with regards to your next project and and uh, you know which which part of history or you know which which monument, so to speak, is is most uh, is most uh, I don't know highly prioritized for um, preservation in XR. Yeah, I think it's uh, we started from the most known and also inscribed in UNESCO, places which are inscribed in UNESCO areas. So if we start from that, I think it will be more interesting to jump from uh, the top ones to the other places. So we uh, promoted a new uh, project under Guzomap. It's called Ethiopia XR. It contains four different places. So from different parts of our country, we try to just bring uh, all these four, the top areas, we believe, to promote uh, internationally. And we also challenged ourselves when we do, uh, when we do this digitalization of this, or preserving this historical sites uh, from the actual place into the physical one, I mean, to the VR world. So the first challenge is for the prehistory of Adwa, we have done a lot in virtual production. So that's what we experimented. The next project will be, I can share it because it will be public in a few weeks. Uh, it's, uh, it's a cave. It's one of, uh, it's one of the famous caves uh, found in, around the globe. It's called uh, Sofumar Cave. So it's around 50 kilometers inside. And we are working uh, with different water simulation. And you will be grabbing some kind of torch. And it feels like... Uh, you are inside uh, the actual place. At the same time, a narrator will be on top of your boat in holographic, hologram kind of image, and he can showcase or explain about the place. So for each project that we have selected, we will also, uh, we are required to experiment a new thing and also bring that uh, to the world. So we are trying to promote, we are also working on this one. So we, are, That's we don't want to be like, I hate. <laughs> That's great. And, and there's a question from the audience that's technical in nature that I think, you know, maybe relates to, um, you know, some of the, the things you were just sharing. You're, you're talking about a cave and I'm thinking, wow, that's got to be challenging. 
Um, one of the technical questions that's come through is how do you deal with performance related issues within VR? Um, and and it was it's referencing the experience in the palace that you showed us. Um, and just, you know, considering effects and the model um, and everything else, um, how do you handle that from a performance perspective when there's so much uh, intricacy in the model that you're you're working with? Uh, so the, I mean, having a great team will work out. This is like a short answer I have because I'm not uh, a CGI artist. I'm mostly into the coding part, but uh, our creative team, they are specialized in creating different models, texturing it, retopologizing all 3D models for VR. So it, we will have like a seamless experience at the same time. And we use even high-end gaming machines to create all the uh, 3D scene. But the virtual reality or the VR headset itself uh, has different optimization techniques. So we apply most of the, most of the uh, optimization concepts behind creating this kind of scenes. So yeah, we are trying our best, but we still have some to do. <laughs> Great. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure there are many other questions. What you shared with us on the screen is beautiful. And I think a lot of people have a lot of great questions for you. But I know that we're out of time. Um, I'll hand it yeah, over to Roman. Right. Daniel, thank you so much for sharing this with us. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, it, it, I think you're, you're contributing to the world in amazing ways and allowing some of us thank that have never been to, um, yeah, to experience your world. So thank you. Arome? Thank you. Hey, man, thank you so much for your time. Um, do have a great day. Um, we'll have to jump on the next call right now. And um, we'll catch up soon. Thanks. Bye -bye. So thank you, everyone. Um, we're jumping onto our next call. We have Joyce. She'll also be talking about how she's using XR for tourism and also heritage conservation in Africa. So see you all soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. All right.